Alright guys, so this is the last video about creating a Telluride. And for this one, we are taking it all the way back to the beginning. We will see some of the very first sketches and renderings, and have them explained by the lead designers. One of the coolest things though is that Kia brought the concept vehicle in for this event. So we will get to look at it and the production model side by side, and hear how they decided to keep or delete certain elements for production. So with that said, let's hop right in. Uh, so first I'd like to introduce Mr. Kurt Call right here, who is, if you look closely at a lot of these sketches, look at that guy, he even knows how to sign his name cool. So <laughs> on that note, uh, I will hand out to Kurt, who is going to give us a little presentation on, on how the vehicle, well, I'll shut up and you do yeah. it. You know what Anyway, <laughs> yeah, my name is Kurt Call. I'm senior designer at Kia Design Center America. Uh, in charge of uh, exteriors. Uh, my recent projects are Telluride, Seoul, Sorrento, uh, the first two generations of Forte, including uh, sedan, hatchback, and coupe. Um, and then a lot of concept cars, the Telluride concept, uh, Trailster, GT4, Stinger, um, some of the projects that I've worked on. We really don't usually have too much uh, strict direction in the beginning, but we the designers are free to explore ideas, which I think is really nice. Um, so I was one designer of about maybe seven or eight that was sketching, and then some of, some of these are actually uh, very early versions. This is a sketch that uh, was selected to uh, enable me to have a scale model. We're always competing on, we're sketching first to compete to see who's going to get a scale model. So it's an internal competition. Uh, early scale model is right here. And you can see some of what ended up on the, the concept and production car as well, starting to um, come into fruition. But of course, there's a lot of there's a lot of versions of it, and there's um, a lot of refinement that goes along the way. <coughs> so this this turned into uh, after winning the competition for scale model, it turned into a full size property that became our Telluride concept, and that was shown in 2016 Detroit Auto Show that you can see on your left there. Um, that got a great customer reaction. It was kind of perfect the way it went. Uh, I, a lot of times our ideas of concept cars is to gauge a reaction. If it goes really well, then hopefully there's a, a chance for production. Yeah, so a long process uh, takes us to, um, I think around September of last year, uh, showed the Telluride finally in its production form, although customized for the New York Fashion Week, and that was the Brandon Maxwell show you guys may uh, know of. Um, yeah, and then after that, um, shown in Detroit of this year and on sale soon after. So that's the exterior portion. I'll turn it over to Brian and he'll discuss uh, the interior. So my name is Brian White. I was the uh, interior designer for the Tony Ride. Uh, some of my background is uh, I was also a graduate of Art Center. College of Design uh, and Transportation Design. Um, I worked at Ford for maybe 19 years in Michigan and mostly in California. And then I started working at Kia. I've been there for 11 years now. The process is really quite a long process. There's, there's quite a few dates that we have to go to, go through. And it really kind of started with the concept car. So uh, and it was a, it, like, like Kurt said, there's a, it's a competition. So uh, in the beginning, we had maybe five or six different designers working on different ideas. And it kind of gets narrowed down to, to one theme. And so really what it ended up being was, a, was, a, was the team, the interior team. There was about four or five of us. A couple of these sketches show some of the earlier ideas. Uh, we started out wanting to do a white screen. But uh, really a lot of what some of the influence that came from the show car into the production car were uh, some, of the, some of the tough, rugged feel about it with the grab handles. Uh, and we ended up, ultimately we ended up using a little bit of the vent theme because we wanted to create a, a really wide, open, spacious feeling, luxury feeling. This is one of our process. We'll do a, we'll do a, a digital model and uh, in math. And then these are actually just drawings taken from the math model, basically, when we Photoshop them and we show them as realistic drawings.
see one on the road ahead of you or you're walking out to the parking lot to get in yours, what is the one design element that you kind of go, yeah, I like that. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it, might be, it might be kind of surprising, but I really like the way the rear turned out. Oh, and okay. it's something when you're on the road, that's kind of what you see most of. If you're following cars, you, you tend to see the rear of cars. So to me, that's a really important part anyway. And I think we kept a lot of the concept um, on the, the rear. Yeah, the we, a lot of the same, back. the upside down L-shaped tail lamps, the very wide feeling of the, just the overall wide feeling of the rear, but also the shoulder, the way it tapers and gives a nice stance to the rear of the car. Um, the skid plate, the elongated Telluride bad, uh, badging across the vehicle. Yep. Um, I mean, obviously you see differences. We had to make compromises for production, but I think the essence is there from the concept. I think this is pretty distinctive as you see that going down the road. Um, it is delineating the very corners of the vehicle. It's also allowing a lot of sheet metal mm. to kind of just be uninterrupted across uh, the rear. So you do get a feeling of width. But I think we contrasted that with the way the shoulders are in and the way you see the flares. And so it sets up a nice stance right. also. What was that? A sonic boom, Kurt. Man, seriously, you're bringing Whoa. the heat. Yeah, <laughs> well done. No way. <laughs> um, yes, no. So what, what? What are like top three features that you wish would have made it over? <laughs> to uh, well, you know, this is kind of like blue sky. So we didn't have a platform yet. So it's more of a rear wheel drive proportion. So I mean, obviously, this is a. Uh, we had to make a compromise on platform. We were then um, we. You know, we do platform sharing, so we utilize a, a platform. It's vastly improved, but that did, we did have to fight to get as much of this proportion as we could. And I think, once again, engineering did a great job because you don't really see that car as having an extremely long front overhang or what you'd consider a proportions of a front wheel drive. Um, it's still got what looks like a long hood. We've done some things to elongate that hood even more and to lessen the front overhang. Front overhang is always a battle with front wheel drive uh, architecture. We also got the chance to go to the Harman Kardon Experience Studio, which is where we got to learn about audio systems in general, and of course the process of how they're integrated into the Telluride and other Kia models. They also do a lot of scientific testing at this facility, and we even got the chance to go inside their special noise canceling room. It is full anechoic, so it has a little walkway, and the floor is full of these wedges as well. And if you close the door behind you, it gets really, really, really freaky. You can start hearing your, your fluids like run through your body and your heartbeat, and there's stories about people going insane standing in those types of rooms. Because yeah. this isn't natural, right? There's nowhere in nature where this naturally exists. Right. One thing a lot of people don't realize is that Harman is a large company that actually includes nearly all automotive sound system companies under its umbrella. The majority of all branded audio systems come from them, including Harman Kardon, JBL, Bang & Olufsen, Infinity, Bowers & Wilkins, Revel, and Mark Levinson. Uh, why would a car company use Bang & Olufsen over sure. Bowers & Wilkins? So some of it's a character fit, like okay. for the make and the model of the car. Okay. A lot of customers come to us knowing what brand they want because they think, well, this is the demographic of my buyer, and we believe that just optically this is going to be the fit. We have a complete process, so it's a scientific process called symbiotics. Okay. And you can actually take courses on this that actually dives into the character of your customer, of the automaker, okay. and fits it with the character of one of our brands. Okay. And then they get together with our designers, uh, the okay. industrial designers, so it's not just about sounding good, it's also about looking good. It doesn't mm -hmm. look the part of going in the car. So grill design, feature fit, uh, are you going to use an aluminum finish or more of like a glossy plastic finish? Yeah. So okay. there's a whole process involved with that. And again, most customers come in saying, I know that I want this brand. Right. And it's typically going to be Bang & Olufsen or it's going to be something very flashy, but they end up finding out maybe actually Hartman Kardon is a much better fit for me. Okay. There's more brand awareness. Uh, maybe the industrial design is a better fit for my demographic. Yeah. So we try to work with them on that. And that's a challenge when you have 13, 14 brands right. Right, under your umbrella. Because uh, we want to be able to shop around all the different brands, but we want to find a good fit for the customer as well. 
So again, we talked about how we test speakers objectively versus subjectively. So objectively is using microphones and test equipment. Subjectively is using the human ear. So objectively, we want to put that speaker in a room like this. Come on in. And as you step in here, you're going to hear the audio change significantly, right? Yeah. So we call this semi-anechoic because the floor itself is reflective. But we can put a speaker right here, uh, speaker facing up. And then these are different microphones that measure off axis, right? So in a room, it'd be great because you're probably sitting right here in front of the speaker. In a car, you're going to be more off axis because think of where your speakers are in the door and the IP. They're rarely firing at your head. So we can test for off axis response by looking at these speakers. But if you're looking at a room, you're obviously going to be probably focusing more on this because it's directly firing up into the microphone. Again, yeah, what you're looking at, again, R&D, right? So this is where we tweak things, we optimize things, and we take them into these little living room environments and do subjective testing on them. How we package speakers and how many speakers in what location. This might seem like a huge challenge trying to figure out space in a vehicle where we're putting all these plethora of different components around. So how do we get that accomplished? Part of this is it dates back to how long we've worked with Kia. So we've been together for just about 20 years packaging systems. I believe the first one was an Optima all the way back then. So coming from there, there's been a really great ride, right? We've come all the way through. We're delivering what we do now as a team. But as I alluded to earlier, we start five years ahead of a program. So uh, maybe the chief engineer or a program leader will come to us and say, we want this performance. So in the case of the Telluride, hey, we're in this segment. We want to beat our competitors. Great. Now we know a target. We'll talk to Jonathan's team. We'll figure out what that target is for sound quality. All these cars get measured at certain levels. So make sure we hit that and then exceed it. So from there, we start to understand how many speakers we're going to need, what kind of positioning, what kind of technology do we need to be the leader in that position. Then we take those individual components and start packaging them into the car. This part actually takes quite a long time. You know, we're talking with designers. The designers are talking to us. I think a car is a mobile listening environment. Apparently, cars are supposed to do more than that, which is just ridiculous. But we get into there, we put them in, we kind of argue our way into the great spots. The designers make sure it still looks good, we make sure it still sounds good, and then we get to launch a vehicle at the end. Then we tune it. So we actually start to do all that tuning once everything's designed, implemented, and ready for production. Well guys, that's it for the American story of Telluride. It was definitely an amazing experience walking through each of these steps from the very conception of Telluride all the way to when it heads out for delivery to the customer. We hope you guys enjoyed the series and if you did, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. See you next time and take care.